What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the All Elite Podcast right here on the No Holds Barred Network, your source for all wrestling podcast content and more. And we're here live on a different format today. We are live here on Twitch because things happen in this world just that you cannot explain and you have to do what you got to do, especially in times like these. And we had to do what we had to do, which we'll explain in a second here once we get through all the intros. But uh, we're here live on Twitch. We are going to be, uh, the video will be posted on YouTube after this is done. Um, and then on all audio formats right after that. But I'm your host as always, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters and owner and CEO of the No Holds Bar Network. And I'm joined always by my co-host. She's the executive vice president of Giggles. She's a heartbreak chick, the queen of the indies, possibly Brie Bella today. Who knows? That's <laughs> Tiffany. Wait, maybe I should switch it then. Hold on a second. <laughs> it is a Brie Bella one. <laughs> oh, it, that actually is one. Okay, I joked about it earlier. I'm like, oh, you're looking all Brie Bella today. <laughs> or Nikki. I mean, nah, that's a Brie, right? That's a Brie one. I don't remember. God, it's oh been my so God. long. Oh, now. <laughs> Look at this. What a mess. What's going on here? <laughs> Gotta have some entertainment with all this shit going yes. on, right? Yes, guys, welcome to the All Elite Podcast, where myself and Tiffany, well, at least Tiffany tries to, uh, we, <laughs> we go over and recap AEW Dynamite, we keep you guys up to date with what's going on in AEW World, try to keep things uh, more positive than negative, especially nowadays with what's going on in the world. Hope everyone out there is safe, they're washing their hands, they're keeping sanitary and uh, doing the best they can while being self-quarantined in their homes. I know it's very tough, I know you can get cooped up a lot, uh, it's been happening to me, uh, you know, like frustration level, it's like, it's weird, right? When you you're cooped up a lot um i've noticed that like you just get frustrated so easily right because you're so just cooped up and with a p tiff not with a k cooped up <laughs> cooked up cooped up but uh yeah it's it, it is really tough for everybody guys so you know we'll, we will get through this together um and in the meantime you know we have outlets like this like podcasts out there to keep you guys entertained we're gonna try to be as entertaining as possible on here and uh, thank you to those who have come over our regular fans over to twitch to watch us here live um rather than youtube youtube was just giving us so many problems today we ran about i even can't even count how many it had to be in the double digits for <laughs> offline tests I don't know what was going on. We we were we had we we're doing stuff with OBS. Then we said F OBS, screw you. We're go we're leaving. We downloaded uh, OBS. Got some coronavirus. Yeah, I don't know <laughs> what happened. <laughs> he got the virus. <laughs> He's got the cancer. Oh, <laughs> Anywho, God. anyways, we now we have now we're on Streamlabs OBS. So uh, we did a million tests with this one, and we <laughs> seemed to found an outlet that streaming to Twitch somehow works. Whatever. We're trying for it. Now. We're trying it for now. Yeah. For now. From what <laughs> I've gotten, and I from the answers that I've gotten from YouTube help, is that um, they're doing the best they can to keep up with, uh, like, their team obviously is being affected, obviously, with the coronavirus, and, and in their team having to stay home, so they don't have enough staff to keep up, obviously, with, you know, keeping the servers clean and all that that jazz. I don't know. It was it, it, I feel like it hasn't been happening to everybody but it seems to be happening to us. We can connect to YouTube. It just wasn't happening. So now oh we're on God. we're on Twitch. If you guys are listening on the go, it doesn't affect you because you're just listening on the go. Yeah. So good for you like guys. That. Thank you for downloading the episode, by the way. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we do appreciate you guys each and every single week that share the podcast on any social media outlets. Um, if you guys download the episode on the go, if you guys play back and watch or if you're watching live, we do appreciate you, each and every single one of you guys. It's what you guys out there keep me and Tiff coming back each and every single week. So each and every single week, you know, if we do like a shout out of the week, it's to everybody out there that watches this podcast. Thank you very much, especially through this tough time. Obviously, Tiff, with it just seems like every day it seems to be getting worse and worse. You know what I mean? Like it's every day in the world, like this thing is just taking over and it just seems to be getting worse worse by the day and it, it, it does stuck right especially it, like it, i don't <laughs> i went out today and i went to my local uh to you guys it would be cvs to me it's called shoppers drug mart so same mm -hmm. thing they, the stores do basically the same thing um and they had these footprints on the ground for social distancing at the cashier lines really <laughs> that you had to stand this much apart from each other six feet yeah 
That's oh, how man. crazy it's gotten. To, it's gone to this point where we've had to put little footprints on the ground of the cashier for you where to stand. Right? And it had a security guard watching to make sure you sat oh, in God. these feet. If you watched, um, what was it, GCW last week, I was dying because it was Joey Janela versus Jimmy Lloyd. And uh, Baby Raph Chris, uh, he pulled out, there was called a social, Kyle, you, I want you to watch this match because you were going to kick out of this. It was social distancing match. And they had okay, to be I've seen six- a clip. I did see a clip. Okay, yeah. And I died when baby ref Chris pulled out the ruler. I actually tweeted at him. I was like, he did not just pull out his freaking ruler. And he was like, he retweeted my tweet. And he was like, it's the rule. (laughs) Oh, God. I'm like, I'm done. I was like, this is what I love about wrestling. Yeah. Um. So, so yeah, it is crazy out there. Now, that's funny. That's entertaining to see. I, I saw a little clip of them going at each other. Um, Tiff, you were asking a chat. If, but you uh, know. Hold up. A- when did Tiff become a Bella twin? First of all, if you knew, I was always a fan of Brie Bella. Like, stop it. It's not new. This isn't news, okay? This is, this is, this has this, been a thing. This is fake Kyle news. Knows. I can't do it. I can't do a Donald Trump impression. <laughs> Dra- what are you drinking there, Fair. Tiff? Is that the white claw? It's the spicy water. Spicy water, white claw. <laughs> White claw. White claw. It's a Joey special. Well, you have Ghost. your white claw. I'm having a little bit of the bubbly. <laughs> Not that kind of bubbly. Bubbly water, which is no. I find out. I just found out that you guys actually have better flavors than us, and I'm like, of course they do. Now I can't even go over the border to get them. You guys have like peach and mango. I'm like, oh, I have like five flavors up here. What the heck? <laughs> Yes, salsa water. I'm drinking salsa water. <laughs> salsa water. Oh, man. That's a very you New York watch- statement. Salsa Listen, water. You didn't watch the episode of Under the Ropes with Nikolai White, and he was talking about the different brands of water. Are you questioning the that- owner and CEO not to watch his own product on his network? Excuse me. Yeah. Yes. Excuse me. You would have understood the whole salsa water thing, okay? <laughs> oh. Oops. Well, you caught me. I didn't watch it. <laughs> See? See? I know. I have don't a lot on my plate, you know, being an owner CEO is just there's no time. Don't, don't, don't. Just fucking don't. Whoa, stop. potty mouth. I'm gonna here. Social distancing. This is distancing. I might have to separate the I, webcams. I need to be distanced from you. I might you have to like you move your webcam back. over. <laughs> Fudge. Man. No, okay, I'm sorry. This needs to happen just to be safe here, Tiff. I'm going to do it for us right now. Here we go. We are now social distanced. It'll, You'll see it on Twitch in a second once it does catch up, but we are now social distanced for a couple of minutes here. We have to be safe. I've social distanced us apart. <laughs> so we have to be safe, Tiff. You never know. You know, it's, it's hard. So, These I'm are hard with, times. Oh, my God. I'm done with you. Yeah. Get out of here. Okay. <laughs> Anywho, Rihu, people are probably like, what's talk some AW already, damn it. I want to hear some AW, damn it. <laughs> All the people that just love the hate. Guys are trying to be positive. Leave, leave us alone. <laughs> we'll talk some AW. Don't you worry about that because I got a test for Tiff. Oh, my and God. She, she, needs to be, she's, she proclaims herself the queen of the Indies. I got a test for her later. We'll get to that later. So actually, let's uh, let's talk about it. Let's get we got let's do dynamite first tonight, and we'll get right, some we'll get some fun. It. So dynamite tonight was uh, interesting. So I actually have a note here about dynamite. So they did announce AEW that the next uh, four shows are relocated now to, um, uh, you know, in Daly's place now for the next couple. Of weeks. Obviously, with everything just looking like it's going to be like this for a while. So mm-hmm. I have the rescheduled date. So AW Philly is being uh, rescheduled to July 29th. Now the next three weeks after this is where it gets interesting. I don't know if there's if they have stuff in place already and it's why it's being booked so far, or are we finally are we maybe getting an off season? I don't know. I don't know what's going on with this. But so AW Philly was rescheduled to July 29th, and now the week after AW Houston is being rescheduled all the way to November 4th. Hmm. 
And AW New Orleans is being rescheduled all the way to December 2nd. And Albuquerque, the week after, is being rescheduled all the way to December 30th. So hmm. besides Philly, which is Philly has been added to all the rescheduled dates from what, like Rochester and on. After Philly, Houston, New Orleans, Albuquerque, all all the way to the end of the year. Like this is even past full gear. I think was we went to full gear in October or November. I don't even remember what month it was. <laughs> <laughs> been locked up so much in the house, like literally. Like I some days, sometimes I've been forgetting what day of the week it is. Like I have to, I literally have to pull my phone and go, okay, what? <laughs> Weird, right? November. Like someone put in the chat it was just- November, so. November, yeah, it was November 9th. Anyways, um, yeah, so those those three dates are pushed to the end of the year, which kind of sucks. Because people in New Orleans, you know, that party town, they're probably, like, waiting for some AEW. Now they got to wait all the way till December. It, it's true, though. Like, we did talk about this, that they wanted to have an off season, So, but they were never really clear about it. Mm-hmm. So interesting. I don't know. I've seen that, and I'm like, okay, there has to be a reason. Either they have dates already booked for August, September, October – in place or there's a reason why they've pushed those three dates so far down the year. I don't know. Maybe it's the arena scheduling. Maybe, maybe it's the, like they had to work with their arena. Maybe their arenas are booked after July. Who knows? Um, I just kind of put into perspective like, okay, well maybe if they're going to do an off season, maybe we're going to have an off season in between, but then we did have to skip over all out, which kind of sucks. So it kind of wouldn't make sense, which they won't do. (coughs) Sorry. Huh? We shall we shall see. We ha we shall see. So also what's going on uh, I guess I I, I want to get into dynamite, but might as well go on. Let's go actually no we'll get into dynamite. God, I'm all over the place. All right, let's go dynamite. We'll dynamite. go back to anything else. All right. Dynamite. Go ahead. Dynamite. Um so yeah, this week again from the Daily's place. This time no wrestlers at ringside. Okay, so I don't I, I didn't really get this part. So you're you're gonna take the wrestlers away from I guess so they have to take the wrestlers away from ringside because of social distancing, right? Right. Well, why why no. is there like eight people inside of a packed trailer? Isn't that maybe there was maybe now there's like more rules like because you saw on being the elite right that Matt was talking about only ten people can be in a room. So maybe the fact that it would have been overloaded to have more people in the seats because you have to figure out your camera crew your ring guy you know like the you know commentary maybe that's why they did it this time maybe they're getting more strict because it's getting worse okay so if you count jericho sammy cody kenny oh and matt hardy that's five then you got brandy at six tony shabon seven a camp two camera guys eight nine and the ref 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 ten so i mean Yeah, it's tough. And you, but the best part was of the whole night, they might have been in the trailer, but you could hear them still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> it was so quiet because they were wrestling with no one at ringside. You can hear them yelling from the trailer, <laughs> oh which is great because like, that just adds more awesomeness to it because they could have just taped that whole trailer scene and just played it throughout the night, but they didn't. Ooh, I just banged my boom arm there. Anyways, um... But it was live all night, and they were like betting. Like Sean Spears was betting still. Dasha Fuentes got really like into her. Dasha, sorry, da- Dasha Gonzalez. Yes. Fuentes is her WWE name. Dasha oh Gonzalez was into it like heavily, especially near the end. Like she was just yelling <laughs> at the TV. I was dying at Kip with the dog. Yeah. And then like dog went nuts when Sean Spears went running. <laughs> they kept holding up a sign saying he farted too. Like, <laughs> did you notice that? <laughs> There was so many different signs. What was the other one? I was dying. I was like, Sean Spears is like still looking for a partner. I saw that. Yeah. Sign. yeah. <laughs> that was great. I can't. I Speaking can't. of signs. Oh, what is it? I'm not booked, Cody, but I'm not booked, Cody. That was the other sign. Right. I'm not co- booked. I love it. I love it. Speaking of signs. Yes. Um, There was an incident with a specific sign tonight on Dynamite that. Uh, oh my God. So. <laughs> So, M- I'm guessing Sammy went uh, had these done by somebody. Like those, they look like the, the sketches done. Like if you go to like an amusement park, and those yes. people you pay them like ten bucks, and they'll do like a sketch yeah. you like a big head sketch. More money, yeah. I live in New York. It's more you go down to Central Park and you're sitting like you're posing. And they're doing okay, the so it's drug. not as common up here. So to me, it's like you only see that in the amusement park, and that's it. Anyways, 
Excuse me. Um, so they're all like at ringside. There's one of Jericho, I think I seen. There was a, a Star Trek character, and then there was one of Brandy. Oh my god! Now at one point in the match with Omega and Sammy Guevara, he went over. He went over to the pictures right before commercial break. He grabbed it off the chair. It was taped to the chair, and he just like. Mm, I don't. I don't even know. I couldn't even call that kissing. That was like he was licking it. He was like, ah. eating it. <laughs> <laughs> and the I'm best sorry. part of that entire thing was this right here. Oh Brandy's my face. <laughs> it's Come face. on, guys. Don't tell us you didn't freaking die laughing with her face. That is the greatest face I've ever seen, and this should be put into a meme. I um, you know what? <laughs> Let's give us. Let's make this a competition for next year. For next year, next week. Yes, <laughs> guys, crop this right now. I'll, it, it it is on our All Elite Podcast Twitter. Make a meme out of it, and the best meme will be featured on the show next week. How about that? That sounds fun. So, Absolutely. There you go, guys. There's a contest for next week. Best one will be featured on the show. Crop this picture out if you have to pause the video or go to our All Elite Pod. I did make a tweet with it. Get it and make a meme out of it, and best one will be featured on the show next week. <laughs> yeah just when you thought it was safe and i saw a like tweet the- i didn't hear it it might have been in the fight <laughs> <laughs> it might have been in the fight tv feed but someone did tweet saying that he i guess he looked at brand air he looked at uh that the picture and said i'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna destroy it later or something like that i'm like oh my god what the Yo, that's the face i make with all the dms from the freaking creepers <laughs> oh so guys, just just to put in perspective, so when Twiff, t- Twiff, Tiff, get <laughs> when Tiff gets a uh, DM from a, uh, a creeper, her instant face is this. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Tiff's face. Every time a creeper DM, every time one of you creepers DM, you slide into her DM. <laughs> she doing that face. I'm Pretty done. much. Pretty much. I'm so yeah. done. <laughs> um. As for that match, though, that was insane. Kenny Omega and that Sammy was- G for the the Triple A Championship. That was an incredible match that we got tonight. That was so good. It's funny. I forgot that he was holding the Triple A belt. I really yeah. did. I totally forgot about it. Yeah. So and, and the, the match was for it was really it was really well done. Like that was a very good match. Um, it looks like Kenny's hand is is fine. I mean, they did they did do a lot of cell work with it. Um. As for the match, but the match was just so good. That was a very, very good match. It did show a lot of promise in Sammy G. Like we're getting a lot more Sammy G facing Kenny here. Like Kenny made Sammy G look like a star, and he is a star. Like this guy is going to be huge for this company in the future. We got to remember that. Like Sammy Guevara is an incredible performer. Right. Um, he's going to be big for this company in in some way, and it's going to be amazing to see we him grow in this company. Um, he held like he was toe to toe with Kenny through this entire match, which goes to show you something with this guy. So, and I know they, and I understand they have to because they have to make him look strong for because he's in the inner circle, right? Um, but the match was very well done. Kenny winning it made sense, um, and uh, I, I was very very entertained with it. Very very good match. Yeah, really really good. I I didn't I didn't ex- you know I expected it to be really good. I was shocked though. I was like, oh, we're getting this like so early at the main event, and. I mean, but it delivered. I mean, this was this was a match we all needed. Yeah, and then uh, oh. <laughs> Kenny actually was on commentary earlier in the night in the beginning. In the, he was good. Like Kenny, I, I'll, I'll give him that. Like he's very technical. Like he he knew he was naming off all the moves. Same with Cody all night. They they both were like name dropping moves, which are great. Like they're they're kind of like channeling their inner Jr. Um, the thing with Kenny though, like people, I've seen people complain that you know Kenny was. And he's just, he's just too soft spoken, and he, he needs to like. I mean, that's Kenny. He's not a he's not a loud speaker. He's not like we've seen some some of that when he was in New Japan. But that's just that's just how Kenny is, right? That's how he is now. That's how he talks. He, he's he's not gonna be like freaking Jerry the King Lawler on commentary going nuts, right? Um, yeah. But you know, we only had Kenny for that first match. It is what it is. He did the. Uh, um, the beginning match, which was uh, Cody Rhodes and uh, 
uh, Jimmy Havoc, which I was interested to watch too. I was like, okay, how is this how is this match going to go down? It's very physical. These guys like kick the shit out of each other. <laughs> they did. Like they. Did, like, I think Jim, Jimmy looked like he bulked up though. We were talking about this at our Skype party earlier that Jimmy definitely looked like he bulked up. Yeah, and it kept, Cody made mention of that too. It was during the uh, Darby and uh, Kip Sabian match. Yeah. Um, yeah, Darby. that uh, Darby's uh, his chest is getting wider, and same with uh, he he may mention that Kip like they're both working now. He he built them up too, like you can, and this is coming from Cody. He is the president of AEW, so he built up Kip and Darby. He didn't just go for one. He said like these two are the future of this company, and we should be looking at these two as the future of the company. So that's high praise, obviously for Darby. We know Darby's going to be a star in this company. He's proven that but a guy like kip who really doesn't get that much time on tv and he's we've seen he's been getting a lot more time lately he's also like going to be a future part of this company and a big part of this company in the future so those two put on a good match as well like darby and kip that was great i love darby's vignettes oh my god they keep <laughs> these getting are better so, these are so well done <laughs> i love like he does it for like every match and he incorporates everything into it like kip has nothing to do with the inner circle but he incorporated both into the same vignette why not that was so it. good <laughs> with the cutout the cutout faces with the holes punched out and the din- like the dinner table there and he had a little bit of the bubbly <laughs> like his own version of it <laughs> it's a little details i think he kind of does these like somehow like that he's the one like in charge of like filming all I of this so. but i mean they're yeah. giving they give a lot of people creative freedom. I know that the it's the AW team that's behind the Jake Roberts thing. Um, Matt Hardy is going to be fully behind whatever he does. So we know we've seen everybody that's watched Matt Hardy and his broken brilliance in TNA. They know that <laughs> the, the TNA gave him like full everything. They helped him out where they needed to, but it was all Matt Hardy. And the AW is doing the same here. So it's going to be so good. And it, <laughs> I'm sorry. I know it was. It was cheesy and corny. I loved it, but I laughed when he was like zooming down, <laughs> like Matt Hardy was just coming down all, every like part of the arena until he got like to ringside. They did a weird. good job. They did a very good job. Like, it was weird, but it was cool. Like I was like, oh, okay. I was like, okay, I can get behind this. And you know, your eyes are always gonna fit. Like my eyes fixated on Jerry. I was waiting. It's weird because in your head, you're you're like looking. For that mistake, you're like, okay, where are they gonna ha- where are they gonna mess up? That I can see like Jericho's hair is pointed the wrong way. We're like, ah, <laughs> but you're not gonna go online and complain about. It. You just in your head, that's what you're thinking, right? That's what I was thinking. I was watching Jericho's hair, and they did a, they did actually a pretty good job of keeping it the same way. It's like they made Jericho stand in the ring, say, "Hey, don't move, Matt. Come down to this right. level," <laughs> and then come down to this level, and they're like, "Jericho, just don't move at all." And then, you know, it's tough to do with the wind, right? Because the the wind's gonna blow the hair. So I thought they did a pretty good job for what it was. Um, maybe people that don't know about Matt Hardy are going to find it weird at first. I think people will grow to like Matt Hardy. I think what they did tonight with him, they did a very good job in introducing him to the kind of the AW fans because that's what basically that promo was. It was half of the people that already know, they know what he's about, so they kind of, that's how that kind of fed to them. But it also fed to the people that don't know anything about Matt Hardy. Like he he said that he's uh, he's actually someone else. Like he's a uh, was it oh. Damiscus was like, like a three thousand yeah. year old entity that yeah. lives inside him, and he's like you know he's living through Matt Hardy the vessel. Um, it's it's, it's just it's really cool and like for for someone that doesn't understand like um an example here. Okay, so Mrs. Masters was was was, was texting me because we're you know social distancing can't watch together. It sucks. Um. She's like, like, she's understanding more about it. Like, she didn't get it at first, but now she's, you know, she's understanding more of it. So I think they're doing a good job at introducing him to the new fans. And I think the new right. fans are going to love this. The Broken Brilliance is amazing. Yeah. And then the fact that you kind of cater to the old fans as well, too. So even before WWE and then you go back into like Ring of Honor of how they had their their matches, um, you know, the Young Bucks versus um, yeah. Matt and Jeff. So, but I'm loving it. I'm loving it that he doesn't need Jeff. That we just have like Matt with all this. So I'm I'm really stoked of where this is gonna go. And and Cuba Girl brought up Vanguard that they yeah. did him right. They totally did. Oh my god, this shit that was, was so- great. Jericho talking to him. Yes. <laughs> Vanguard, what? you know what? I don't like you, piece of shit, but I respect you. <laughs> That's why I want you to join the inner circle. 
<laughs> think about all the things you can do. <laughs> I don't know how these guys don't laugh during some of this thing. All like, the van, all the drone models you're gonna get on Drone Inner Circle. Oh my god! Hashtag Cutler footage. It was so. It was so funny. It was so good. I bet you Cutler was controlling Vanguard. Guarantee. Of course. Yeah. He's always with the freaking drone. Like yeah. I saw him. I took a picture with him with the drone. It's so cool. Yeah. So. Yeah. It was. It was that whole segment was good. Like the the whole thing with the drone. Matt Hardy's theme song, love it. Yeah. Uh, Rukus, I don't know how to say his last name. Ruckus. Ruckus. Ruckus, amazing work. I oh, I tweeted him with the All Elite's Twitter account. It, it it sounds so good. It's so it fits Matt Hardy, and even just that whole promo, like them going back and forth with each other, is great. Like Matt, like Chris Jericho talking like a normal person. Matt Hardy like saying like oh there's there's actually many people here all the entities and Chris Jericho's like well actually there's not I don't see, you know I can't see anybody Matt but uh, them like say, like there was that should... one there was that one comparison where Jericho was like you know you're still the same Matt Hardy you can portray this character but you're still the same Matt Hardy as I knew you and then him going back and Jericho going like you like you're still that same evil deep inside even though you've portrayed many characters and i just love this entire promo it was very very well done even at the end it was so cool with like <laughs> matt hardy controlling the flames and the whole delete thing and all of them shooting up and <laughs> the look at sammy's face that whole bit with the flames was mm-hmm. absolutely insane it got you like really excited mm-hmm. do you think there's going to be a vanguard shirt for pro wrestling tre- tees <laughs> yeah eventually <laughs> i, I like know there's the all delete shirts really shirt cool up. Yeah. The shirt's coming, man. Yeah. The shirt's totally coming. <laughs> um, oh, man. So but I love the fact that he was like, when he was uh, when Jericho was talking about Abracadabra, like, I could do magic too, and then he's like, you're going to get beat up, or whatever, and then Sammy. Yeah. But I don't know, it kind of seemed weird to me, the whole segment a little bit, but I get it. Like, you know, it got its point crossed, and then you had Cody Rhodes and Kenny come out with the chairs. But I don't know, for some reason to me, it didn't seem as natural for yeah. some reason. But It's tough to do when you can only do it with so many people. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah, for what they did, it, I think it was all right. Um, they are building towards a future day. I know they. It looks like they want to do blood and guts. They want to wait until this thing's kind of over and get back into the arenas to do blood and guts. So, I think until then, this is going to be a long build, unless yeah. they do it somehow. At the, we don't even know what's going on with Double or Nothing yet. Yeah. Like this it's thing scary. just looks like it's pushing further and further toward the point where. They might postpone double or nothing. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be tough because I can't I can't see them doing double or nothing in an empty arena. And then and then you have like you don't know what's gonna happen. Now we're getting less. We didn't even get a women's match tonight. You know, and I feel like we're getting less and less. So now I mean the good thing is I feel like we're getting more time mm-hmm. of the matches. Like right, did you feel like we had more time today yeah. with each match? But the bad thing is we're having less matches and I mean, it's good because you could showcase some of these wrestlers, but, you know, sometimes less is more. Yeah. But like, you know, you still got to worry about the safety of these guys also until like somebody else gets this like that. Then that's going to be like close shop. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. For what we have, I think we should just enjoy it, though. Yeah, we enjoy it until it leaves. Like every minute (laughs) you tune in every minute and you support it, guys, because one day you never know. It could be gone, and it could be a long time. We don't know when this thing is going to end. Um, for the time being, though, um, uh, speaking of Inner Circle, uh, Hager had a match tonight. Um, couldn't tell you who the hell the guy was. He had a name. Don't know if he was an indie guy. Chico Adams. Was okay, he indie he's guy? Florida guy. I love the fact, and I talked about this a little bit, I love the fact that they're getting like more indie guys. So I, you know, they're trying to help out the indie, you know, community as well. So it was such a squash match, but he was in, uh, what does it believe, uh, pro wrestling, full throttle pro wrestling. I believe wrestling, real pro wrestling, riot pro wrestling. So, okay. Indie guy. You're getting warmed up for your test later. Okay. Um, oh, so yeah, so Hager had a quick squash. Uh, they, they're really building him up on commentary, which was, uh, you know, this, this guy is 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 being is portrayed as a beast because of his current feud, and we've seen that tonight. Because Moxie came in, I didn't think Moxie was ever going to show up. I thought he quarantined himself with uh, Renee. Um, right. I guess he's still <laughs> able to show. 
on. Did you see the video with him and Renee? <laughs> that was fantastic. Paper? Yeah, he super kick. <laughs> he super kicks Renee and then steals it. That was. He checked, he checked on her. He yeah. checked and then he took the. <laughs> that was great. That was so good. If you guys missed it, go watch it. It's on. I think it's on uh, Renee's chant on her Twitter account. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, Mox even came down to the ring, and they're setting up obviously him and Hager. Looks like that's going to be the next title, the next title feud, and I think it should be. I mean, Hager is going to be built up as one of the top guys in the company, as well as he should. He's just an absolute beast, and. I like this Moxley and him feud. I think it's a very, very big grudge feud. And, you know, like, these two are going to beat the living crap out of each other when they eventually go at it. So I'm loving that. I thought it was a cool kind of mini segment to start their feud without getting too much out of the way. This is kind of like the first steps. It's going to keep building, obviously, until I, I imagine they're going towards double or nothing. And, again, we have to take this kind of like week by week. We don't know what's going on with Double or Nothing yet. I'm sure they will announce maybe closer to with what the city of Las Vegas is going to be like. Because right now Las Vegas is kind of shut down. So that means MGM is shut down. So we don't know what's going on. So uh, we'll have to wait until then. Um, other than that, um, Jake the Snake Roberts had a really cool, really, really good promo today on Cody um, after his match. It was very, very well done with the fire and everything. I thought it was perfectly done it's it's creating more of a buzz with this lance archer and like him and lance archer together <laughs> that's been the perfect pairing i would never have thought those two together like you could have sat there and and you get lance archer into aw and go okay who are we going to pair him with as a, like a manager type role you i don't think anyone could have picked jake the snake roberts and when he was announced as him people were like okay well, this could be good you know jake the snake is he is what he is you know his his uh his reputation precedes him and right. now we're getting like we're getting all these, and that was a very very good promo by Jake the Snake, and um, I can't wait to see how that that feud gets built. Um, the other thing that happened on Diamond, what was it? Uh, Got to talk about the Exalted. That's one. it, Brody Lee. I, I was like, there was another thing yet, and I'm missing it here. So <laughs> this was this made Brody Lee look like an absolute boss, okay, like cult like boss. Apparently, I didn't know this. This was a this was a shot, another shot of Vince McMahon. So obviously, Brody Lee as a human being, I'm not talking about the character, but Brody Lee is pissed off at the WWE for how he was treated there, because he he came out in his opening uh, promo last week saying like, Chris Daniels, you're not the first old man to you know to not believe in me, and then now this week, apparently that that sneezing at the table thing was. A shot at Vince because apparently there was like a this thing that went around from what I read that Vince McMahon hates it when you sneeze at the dinner table so that was and that was like a shot at him like he he enjoys eating steak he was kind of dressed in a suit you know what I mean and then he he gave shit to Alex Reynolds for sneezing so apparently that was a shot at Vince McMahon oh see I didn't even know that yeah I had, I had to read that online other than that besides that regardless of the shot or not this was well done. This was so well done because it makes him look like a fearful, just boss-like leader of this this organization. Like Alex Reynolds and um, uh, what's the other guy's John name? Silver. John Silver. John Silver. They were like pissing their pants at the dinner table. Like they were shitting bricks. <laughs> so um, I thought this was so well done. This was a very, very good promo. It makes... Brody Lee just again he looks like that top guy he fits the leader rule so well this is the most I've ever heard him talk as well I don't remember him talking at all in the WWE I've never heard this guy talk before he said more in two weeks than he's ever said in his entire WWE career I so, just want some steak. and he did good yeah it did look good yeah <laughs> I mean it was a little tough he, he was cutting it pretty hard so <laughs> I want some steak though <laughs> anyways uh yeah, um, Brody but even Lee. like the match, like after with QT Marshall and everything, and then and then at the ending with the dropping of the mask onto QT yeah. to join the Dark Order. Like I feel like this is a perfect way to like keep going with it of building the Do Dark Order. Do you want to guess who the hell was in that creeper outfit? There was just the one creeper with them. I was yeah, like, okay, where's? 
Are, are, are Evil Uno and Grayson like quarantine themselves? Like, are, is that why they're not there? They had the, some random person. I want to know if it was someone backstage that's already there. You know, that chose to stay. Yeah. Like, yeah. Who, who was it? Who was that? <laughs> I was trying to figure it out the whole time. I was like, staring. I was like, who is this guy? I know. It was definitely not John Silver. So um, there's one of those creepers but, in Tiff's DMs. Yeah. That's who it was. The other creepers, yeah. Maybe it's Kyle. <laughs> there's no way it was me. <laughs> I can't. I can't. I can't leave my house. <laughs> can't cross the border. I can't even cross the border. So it's definitely not me. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, I, I'm I'm happy with with uh, the exalted one so far. I, I, I think we're gonna get some big things. Um, I'm loving the uh, the way the the shows are formatted. I think it's still good, you know what I mean? Until until they get fully like locked and shut down for what we're getting week to week, I think this is good. I'm enjoying yeah. it. it. I'm not They're even They're trying. They're hardest. They can't you know really I mean? say anything. And it's not yeah. even phasing me that there's no crowd. Half the time yeah. I'm not phased that there's a crowd there, right? Cuz I'm so focused cuz I it's the love we have for this brand probably that you you, you kind of just don't kind of focus that there's no crowd there, you know what I mean? It doesn't it doesn't right. really hit me. So What's weird though is hearing the grunts and like all the like half the time. You start like seeing more and uh, you know you're paying attention more to detail, which kind of sucks. Yeah, it's funny sometimes hearing them talk to each other. It's hilarious. Yeah, (laughs) Uh, the best. That's it. That's what we could ask for. At least, at least we have. At least we still have in wrestling. Yeah, we still have the wrestling. The wrestling. Wrestling. Um. So Tiff. Let me give you yeah. your quiz now, your indie quiz, since you proclaim yourself as the indie queen. AW Dark this week had about four matches. Four matches. One match only had, had featured AW person versus AW person. The other three, we brought this up a couple weeks ago that they might start using some independent talent. Three other ones had independent talent. I want you to, I want to know where they're from. Yeah, okay. Good like, I didn't even watch. I didn't even get to watch Dark. I will this name week, the wrestler. But I know Sugared was one. Shh, so not there yet. So the first one, we had SCU take on Sean Spears and Robert Anthony. Yeah. Do you know who that is? No. They're all Florida based guys. Okay. But I don't know. You're queen of the Indies. Indies is not just New York. Yeah, I know that. I can't keep up with all the freaking indie guys. It's e- it's easy for me to know the New York, New Jersey guys, okay. and even like you know maybe Boston and and uh, Pennsylvania and stuff like that. I really there's too many. You can't you can't keep up. Mm-hmm. But I do. I, I have seen uh, Sugared before. Okay, so number two, Joe Alonzo faced Jake Hagar. No. Yeah, I've seen I've seen him floating around like on Twitter. I've been seeing uh, him been posted around even on Twitter. I've so, seen a no, lot. I, of I, I don't I don't really know all the indie. I really don't know the indie guys. So, okay. but like I said, I've heard like of Sugared before. Okay, so, he's good. Number three, we had Matt Sells and John Cruz versus QT Marshall and Dustin Rhodes. Yeah, I gotta go back and watch Dark. I didn't have time to watch Dark. <laughs> I do. I gotta watch these two. Looked hilarious, and I've seen a lot of retweets for these two. So mm-hmm. I'm wondering what their what their story is. And they came out with like a girl too. So I'm gonna rewatch this as well and find out what's the what's the deal with that. And then the last one, finally, Tiff, you can talk about it. Shug. <laughs> no, I've seen him around. I again. Is it Shug D or Shugged? Shugged. 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 Why is there a space between the E and the D? I don't know. Again, I don't <clears throat> can't keep up with all the freaking indie guys. There's a million freaking indie guys. But I mean, you're the queen of the indies. Oh lord, I am. Sh- so Shug D faced Kip Sabian. The guy looks like Xavier Woods. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I see uh, clips. I did. I was able to see like some of the clips, but I didn't really watch it all. Which was Too cool. Much- yeah. What, what was cool about Dynamite was you see like half of it was filmed in the daytime. That was pretty cool. I kind of, I kind of yeah. enjoyed that. I kind of get, I got, I, I, I can mess with that. I can mess with that. <laughs> Apparently, they taped a lot of uh, dark matches. I don't know if they filmed a lot then for this week as well, 
But uh, I kind of love that concept still. Again, we have to enjoy it for what we have right now. It could shut down any minute, so we'll see what happens. Um, another thing that's been floating around, this is interesting. Um, someone tweeted about MJF. Uh, <laughs> doesn't tweet about MJF. I mean, but this is interesting. So he was in a choir. Or not a choir. He was in an acapella group in high school. And someone found like footage of this. Of him singing. And the guy is actually not that bad. I'm just going to put that out there. And then he, someone, he retweeted it. And he puts only plain view JFK graduate to be an all-state in football middle linebacker. I was a choir tenor number two and a manager of an acapella group called the Acafellas. I'm literally perfect. In high school, I pulled more tail than a kid at the petting zoo. Very familiar. <laughs> and he put nothing's changed in brackets. Hashtag better than you. Yeah, I'm definitely familiar of where he's from. That's crazy. I didn't know he was in an acapella group. That's funny. MJF of all people. Little bitch. And he he was proud of it. You see him tweet like he was in choir tenor number two and he's a manager of the Acafellas. <laughs> oh, God. Guy's great. Guy's funny. I love him. Uh, another funny video. Apparently, we've shown this on the podcast before. I don't remember. Apparently, Tiff remembers it. I just seen it floating around today. So someone's been reposting it today of some guy dressed that looks like Orange Cassidy doing this. It's an old video, man. I didn't know. I've this is the first time I've ever seen that video. And if it was on the podcast, I don't remember. <laughs> but is, if for you video. guys that are listening on the go, it was uh, someone on one of those hoverboards. Is that what they're called? Hoverboards. Yeah. And then they 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 went off to they they drove it to the edge of a bridge and they they did a suicide dive over the bridge with his hands in his pockets, Orange Cassidy style, in like his denim, you know, his Canadian tuxedo there. So, that was funny. I don't know. Denim, denim, denim. I don't know. I, <laughs> <laughs> wow. I seen it today. I the first time I've ever seen that video. Okay. I don't we'll know. I didn't that. know that was old. It is an old video. Whatever. Whatever. Drink your white claw. Whatever. Right, I'll have my spicy water. Your spicy water. Your salsa water. Anyways. Anywho, Rehu. Um... <laughs> Really don't really have anything else because it's it's tough it's tough to draw in stuff, you know what I mean? I mean, be the elite was funny. We didn't talk about being the elite this week. I okay, mean, pretty yeah, so much. <laughs> it's the beginning. The, the best part of being elite was the beginning with Kenny Omega going back to his quirky, you know, I'm just getting started kind of self with the toilet paper. <laughs> it was yep. col- color and <laughs> Nick or color and Matt in the hotel room. And then Kenny, like, stealing the toilet paper. Like, he took, like, a strand. He didn't even, like, take the roll. You see him, like, yeah. running out. Oh, okay, okay, guys. Like, and then he's rolling out with the <laughs> the strand. And he's in the room, and he's got, like, a bundle, like, like eight of them. And he's, like, rocking it like a baby. Oh, Yo, that, shit, that was so to good. A, like, rock a bye baby and shit like that. I'm like, stop. That was so good. That was funny. That was funny. No, it was good. At least, like, they're making some sort of humor with it. I mean, and also, it's probably cool with, like, that Matt in the beginning that he was talking about that it's kind of, like, weird. And he's making documents that he said that, you know, even what was the last week of the episode that he was making yeah. documents, you know, because something, like, happened before. It's nice to, like, document all this. And he was talking about getting dinner and uh, you can only have 10 people. Yeah. And, um that they took out the food. So it, it is, it, we've, we're, you know, unfortunately, this is history going on right now. With all of us. Yep. So we are all but part even of if history. He, like, air- <laughs> we are. We're gonna be in the history books. They're gonna talk about that stuff. When we have like kids and all that stuff, and then they make us write, make our kids write papers about what what happened with the coronavirus. Oh yeah, that's right. We're stuck in our houses, and people don't listen. The damn New Yorkers. Yeah, all damn New Yorkers. Like, damn New York. Stay home. Like, what's wrong with you? Like, I get it. You know, we don't like anybody telling us how it is and stuff like that. But really, stay home. But <laughs> yeah. But it's weird, right, to see, like, even the images that they were showing about the airport that you saw, like, nobody in, like, yeah. a ghost town yeah. in the airport. It's crazy. Yeah, Brandon Cutler's on a plane. He, he, was, like, the, he was, like, the only one on there. He's, like, his own private yeah. jet. 
That's crazy. And then, oh my god, the whole thing with freaking Kenny Omega in the room talk, gonna go talk about his arm, yeah, well, his hand, and then Matt coming in talking about grabbing the water for the guys, and Matt leaves, and then he's like, yeah, I can do, I can do this, and then he's like lifting the water. You see, for Cole Cabana, his like, head. Ah! <laughs> Crazy! I can't with him. He's like that the only so one I can't get behind. That was so good. What are you talking about? That was freaking I, I, hilarious. I, he, he just annoys me. Like Why? I don't know. I, like, I don't ever boo. like that. Boo! Boo! Negative you know Nancy. I, boo! I, I cannot get behind Cole Cabana. I'm sorry, and I will wow. say this every shame. Episode. I don't it's have the bell of shame, but I shame. It's one ding, thing ding, I just can't ding. get behind. I'm not a fan. Wow. <laughs> I'm just not a fan. Not a fan so, of Cole. I wonder what Cole had to say not, about that. I'm just not a I fan. I mean, this. I know everybody's like, why, and I'm like, I, I don't know. I'm just not a fan. Was, you, you guys Shame will be on you. Be He's undefeated <laughs> here in AEW. Shame. Yeah. So I really want to know what we're going with with the whole thing with Hangman Page and Matt. When Hangman Page was at the end, sitting at the bar drinking, and then Matt oh, came yeah. in and threw and everything and then he's like oh give me a soda and pretty much all we need to talk so obviously we have a cliffhanger here what is going to go on mm-hmm. here really they cut, they cut it what right so it's like to- ooh. a way to like make it i don't know i have no clue i'm curious i think maybe they did it too because they need to they need some content for the next couple of weeks right yeah, <laughs> it's gonna yeah, be tough to make content true. with less people yeah, I feel like hard. beanie leads are going to be a lot shorter in the next coming weeks. Yeah, oh. yeah definitely. So they're trying, you mm-hmm. know. So we got to give them that credit or whatever. I we got to be understanding. So. Just like we are, guys. We're trying here, and Tiff's talked about with with me today of how to kind of like do some stuff on the podcast that's a little bit different, and uh, I think is what we're going to do like going forward, uh, starting next week. It's going to be it, it's going to be tough to do like a, it's tough to do a whole podcast when. Not a lot of stuff's happening, right? You can't do a podcast and all only when only only dynamite happens and such little things happen around it, like because you can't really report on anything or talk about anything when nothing happens. So we're gonna right. kind of uh, bring some new elements to the podcast. I know Tiff talked about one segment. I think we're gonna start featuring next week. So um, kind of keep an eye out on our Twitter account at all pod or mine. I'm right here at at real right here. Let me point it right right there at real Kyle Masters. Tiffany's is right. I can't reach, but hers is right underneath her. <laughs> I love to dream eighty two. Um, so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna feature like a new segment. I really liked her idea earlier, so we're gonna feature it starting next week. So keep an eye on that and how you guys can somehow get involved with that. Um, I earlier in the show, guys, I told you the meme. I had the picture on our Twitter account, All Eat Pod. It's the one of Brandy's face. The best meme will be featured on the show next week. So uh, get creative out there. Let's have some fun with that. And uh, yeah, you're gonna have to take it week by week here with this too as well. So uh, definitely an interesting times right now. That's all so, I do. So stay inside. Keep your hands clean. <clears throat> Wash those hands. Stay inside. Stay inside. Jeez, yeah. God. Only go out. Okay, sorry. Stay inside, but only go out for essential needs. Going to the park is not an essential need. Going to a store to buy a movie is not an essential need. <laughs> There are other ways. Only leave the house if you have to get food, water, or medical product. After that, don't go anywhere. I mean, it's not like you can't go anywhere. There. Anyways, they're closing everything. Where are you going to go? <laughs> well, it's the essential stuff that's open. I'm shocked. It's not like we're telling people open. to stay inside, too. We're not telling you to like, lock yourself in your house. You can sit outside. Just don't go anywhere. <laughs> like, you can yeah. sit in your porch. You can sit in the backyard if you have one. Like, I'm not telling you to... Lock yourself in your house and don't look outside. Like, you know, maybe I'll buy by the time this is all done. <laughs> I know, guys, we're all in this together. Yeah. But the quicker that this is, the quicker we can go back to normal. Pretty Weird. Much. Other than that, um, yeah, I don't have anything. No, I, I, think, I think I'm good. So, so uh, like we always do at the end of the show, folks. Why don't you, and most importantly, follow our social media accounts. Ah! <laughs> and that is at All Elite Pod on Twitter, the most important one. You can follow us on Instagram at All Elite Pod. And you can like us on Facebook at All Elite Podcast. We also have on-the-go features for this podcast. 
and that is by searching up the No Holds Bar Network on all these different platforms such as iHeartRadio, Spreaker, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Player FM, as some of the platforms that we're on. All you have to do is locate the No Holds Bar Network and you will find the All Elite Podcast on there. Each and every single week, we do shout out these wolves, guys. They give us the song, or they let us use the song, Dead to Me, uh, by these wolves for our official theme song of this podcast. Thank you to Darren and these wolves each and every single week. We hope you guys are safe. We hope your families are safe uh, through this tough time. And we do want to thank you again each and every single week for letting us use that theme song and a bunch of other songs by these wolves uh, on the No Holds Bar Network. So, Darren, you guys have no idea how much this, <laughs> this means to us. So, thank you again each and every single week for letting us use the song Dead to Me uh, by these wolves. Guys, go check them out on their social media links located there on the screen or down in the description below on YouTube. And then uh, go listen to them and check them out on Spotify and Google Play Music. So, Tiff, getting to the end here. And I know it's tough with nothing really to do, but. We're going to make this show fun. We're going to start next Start next week, guys. There's going to be some new features added to the show again, like that meme that we've seen uh, for this week. And then we're adding another segment, which we'll keep you guys up to date on, on our social media platforms. Uh, we're going to have fun with it. I can't wait to get that started. So, uh, yeah, so keep an eye on that. Um, other than that, that's probably going to wrap it up for this episode. Tiff, I don't know if you have any closing remarks. You have uh, something in the works there in your uh, other pods on the network. Yes, I'm always I'm working hard for you guys to get more content. If you guys Ooh. didn't notice, I did an interview with uh, Tony Deppin. Love Tony Deppin. Oh, my God. I'm glad that I got a lot more information about him that I did not know about him. So I enjoy these interviews. Oh, did you know? You know, hopefully you guys do. Like, I do. I get a personal, like, you know what? Like, if nobody enjoys them, I enjoy them. <laughs> <laughs> I love getting up close and personal with these wrestlers. I love it. And number one husband is coming back on Friday. Mm. Yes. Number one husband and Ray is joining me because how can we not have Ray come back and uh, interview his friend? And, you know, we gotta we got to ask Gangone, uh, when am I coming on his podcast and talk some, some uh, horror movies with him? So... <laughs> throw him for a loop on friday but like what what's going on so but i'm always reaching out to wrestlers i know next week i have one i gotta figure out which day but i have another wrestler lined up as well so these are the times that i'm gonna get a lot more wrestlers to come on the stream so we can get up close and personal with them so not too close social distancing so social distancing okay okay it's okay <laughs> <laughs> don't make me move my, i'll move the webcams again no, i miss them though yeah. i miss you guys I love you. <laughs> uh, anywho, Riho. That's going to wrap it up, guys. This has been episode number 75 of this All Elite Podcast right here on the No Holds Barred Network. It is your source yep. for all wrestling podcast t- content and more. I'm your host and owner and CEO of the No Holds Barred Network, Real Kyle Masters. You can follow me on Twitter at Real Kyle Masters. I am always joined on this podcast by my host. Uh, yeah, happy episode anniversary, Tiff. Duh. Like, I always forget that. <laughs> So Tiff is my co-host. What? That's five, man. Yes, I know. Jeez, big year. Um, so Tiff is my co-host. She's executive vice president of Giggles, the heartbreak chick, the queen of the indies. She's got many names. Uh, maybe Brie Bella. I don't know. Who knows? Some will, maybe the, the third Bella twin. She's the third Bella twin. What? You called me Twiffer. Before. Twiffer. She's a third Bella twin. Other than that, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this episode. Thank you for watching here live on Twitch and watching back on YouTube and downloading the episode. We do appreciate every single one of you. We'll see you guys next week for some more All Elite Podcast. I don't know how the story goes.